So let's suppose Bob is standing here in his frame and he sees a rock go flying past. Now he measures the speed of the rock to be ux, b. So the x is to tell us it's in the x direction and b means it's Bob's measurement. Now Alice is in her frame here traveling with some speed v. What does Alice measure this speed to be? What is ux, a? So speed is distance divided by time or delta x over delta t. So in Alice's frame, we have uxa is delta xa over delta ta. So here we substitute in the Lorentz transformations. So this doesn't look very helpful, but now we divide the top and bottom of the fraction by delta tb. And we get this. Now delta xb on delta tb is uxb, the speed of the ball in Bob's frame. And so we arrive at this. Now let's have a check if this is correct. What happens in everyday life if the velocities involved are much smaller than c? Well, in this case, the denominator reduces to 1, and we have uxb minus v, which is what you'd expect. If you were running away from it at speed v, you'd see its speed reduced by v, so long as you're not traveling fast enough to see relativistic effects. So what we call this is the longitudinal velocity subtraction formula. So what do I mean by that? Longitudinal just means Alice's velocity is in the same axis as the rock's velocity. They're both along the x-axis. And it's velocity subtraction because Alice is moving away from it. Now, what about the velocity addition case, if Alice is running towards the rock? Well, in this case, the derivation's exactly the same, except now v gets replaced with minus v. Finally, what about the transverse velocity? This means the rock is moving at 90 degrees to Alice's motion. So we need to add the Lorentz transformation for y, and speed is distance divided by time delta y over delta ta. So just following along with what we did earlier, what does this give us? 